Would you like to know how to build emotional strength and understand your feelings? Do you ever find yourself sad for no reason after a single comment or look sends your emotions all over the place, making you feel like you're losing control of your life? Our emotions are influenced by our circumstances and our relationships with others, and then controlled by our response to these internal and external events. In other words, our emotions are intense feelings that are directed at someone or something. But we all experience life events and we'll be able to justify why we feel these different emotions, from happiness and surprise to fear, jealousy and disgust. But what about the times when we feel things but don't understand why and then have to deal with emotions that we don't quite know how to process, like trust or loneliness? These emotions are often falsely perceived to be a sign of weakness, which leads us to suppress what we're feeling because we're just too afraid to admit to ourselves that we are unable to cope. But denial, deflection and dismissal aren't healthy coping mechanisms and if not managed, can do more harm than good. Emotions are very powerful and it's normal for them to fluctuate as they help us make sense of what we're experiencing and going through. But when they take over, they leave us feeling like we're losing control, both psychologically and physiologically. That knot in the pit of your stomach, the racing heart, the red face and the shaking hands can both be very scary and uncomfortable. So learning how to take back control and feel less at the mercy of these internal and external events enables you to stay cool and keep your calm no matter what is happening around you. So in this video, I'm going to give you five skills to help you become emotionally strong. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sue Blackhurst and do stay watching because I bring the world of social psychology into everyday language. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're fascinated by people watching and human behavior. And if your life isn't going quite to plan and you're looking for some extra support to deal with self-doubt and to gain a sense of purpose, then do take a look at my 20-day Overcoming Obstacles and Build Mental Strength training program. The link is in the description box below. The tools in this program will really help you focus on where you are and show you how to get to where you want to be. And you'll also have the opportunity to download the Introvert Survival Guide and my video on Understanding and Managing Stress. The first book is free and the programme costs less than a night at the cinema, so we can't go there, so give this a go instead. Metacognition. Metacognition means thinking about your thinking. More specifically, it's the ability to rationally assess what's going on in your own mind to make sense of your thoughts, emotions, beliefs, moods and expectations. It's that little voice inside your head that can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Sadly though, too many people still don't believe they are strong enough to stand up to this little voice, so it's just easier to let it win and live life on autopilot, meaning stuff happens and we react. Maybe somebody's made a nasty comment on one of your social media posts and it makes you feel useless and worthless and believing you have no value, you then withdraw from all social media. Or maybe you remember something negative that you've said or you did to a loved one and you begin to beat yourself up with regret and guilt. The more you allow this little voice to be your own worst enemy, the less able you are to create and accept a more rational view. But this inner voice will go into default mode and only give you the worst case scenario. And this is where it becomes dangerous. Let me explain in a different way. So let's say you want to return an item of clothing to a shop and before you go, you have already created a scenario and how they're going to dispute the return telling yourself that you're going to get faced with confrontation. So you get yourself all worked up and anxious even before you've left the house. So when our mind only presents this worst case scenario, we either fight the opposition and dive in all guns blazing, screaming and shouting our demands for no valid reason, or we retreat and surrender and end up doing nothing at all. Between any stimulus and response, there's a space, and it's in this space that we need to become you know, our new best friend. So if you can learn to pause and observe what's happening in your mind, and then take a moment to dispute your own internal enemy, you will start to see a more balanced and rational view of people and events, and feel more empowered to deal with them both. Attention shifting. 
I think there's probably very few of us who would deny that our minds can quickly shift from one thing to another without any conscious thought on our own part. We could be writing a report for work one minute and then searching for a new pair of shoes online the next, or halfway through an email we flick over to social media to see what we've missed. I know that I'm very guilty of losing focus and letting my mind wander so many times a day when I'm sat at my own desk. And as much as we may think we're able to get back on track with that report or the email, the problem is that the content of our thoughts determines the content of our mood. Let me explain why. If you start searching for those new pair of shoes online and then you fall in love with a pair that you can't afford, you end up feeling depressed with your own life or you end up buying the shoes over stretching your budget, leaving you with buyer anxiety. And we all know about the dangers of social media and FOMO, the fear of missing out. It doesn't take long to believe that one photograph posted is a true reflection of somebody else's life, when the reality is that it's probably posted as that one split second that they have to share anything other than the pain that they're currently experiencing. So as we struggle to focus on the task in hand, allowing our mind to aimlessly wander, each time we return back, we're carrying this extra set of emotional baggage to deal with. If you want to change how emotional you feel, you've got to change what you spend your time thinking about and to free yourself from unhelpful thinking patterns and the painful feeling they produce, you must learn to control your attention. But here's the thing. Your ability to control your attention is a muscle, and if you don't exercise it, it will remain weak. This means that your mood and emotions will be at the mercy of whatever comes to mind. So next time you find yourself checking your Facebook page mid-email, bring yourself back into the moment and give yourself permission to go off track only when the task in hand is complete. Self-compassion. Most of us have this strange habit of beating ourselves up and being overly self-critical any time we make a mistake. This is especially ironic since at the same time we're usually incredibly compassionate and understanding when others have a mishap. We are, by nature, overcritical of our lives, from our achievements, our education, appearance, status, value and worth. And the more we look in the mirror and see what we don't have or haven't done, the more we see failure. When you beat yourself up for making a mistake, you only add more painful emotion and stress onto the original frustration or sadness that goes along with making the mistake. But it's a little known fact that most successful people aren't successful for not making mistakes in their lives, they are successful because they made mistakes, learned from them and have the ability to move on without comparing themselves to others and beating themselves up for what they didn't get right. So. Be kind to yourself and learn to give yourself a break. Let's be honest, perfection is so much harder to maintain and it doesn't correlate with happiness. Emotional tolerance. Emotional strength involves learning better ways to respond to difficult emotions and moods so that they don't explode leaving you red-faced and feeling out of control. But the truth is that these initial difficult feelings are often inevitable and no matter how self-aware you are of your painful emotions, they will still hurt when they show up unannounced. Imagine if a marathon runner gave up once they felt tired or it was too hard or too painful. Now, I suspect some do, but I also suspect that they not only have the determination to reach their goal, no matter how long it takes, they are also determined and willing to face that wall head on. The harsh reality is that life is one long marathon and we do have the option to either give up at the first twinge of difficulty or carry on through the pain knowing that the emotions we experience at the goal will be worth it. But the major difference here though is that the marathon runners are not only swept along in this sea of runners by their side, they are also running on the crest of this never-ending support from the millions cheering them on. But you and I, well, we are alone, aren't we? And we don't have this same support, recognition or motivation. So we are facing the challenge on our own, but the harsh reality is that actually there is no alternative. So let's be realistic because you have to be able to get on with your life despite feeling bad and you need to be able to live your life despite feeling difficult emotions. Because you can't just wait around to do important things with your life until you feel perfect as perfection doesn't exist. So 
The trick is to build up your emotional tolerance. The only way that runners are able to keep running for so long, even though they're exhausted and in pain, is because they've built up their tolerance and strength. They don't run a marathon. They start out running a couple of miles until they get stronger. Then they work up to five miles until they get even stronger, and then 10, and so on and so on. Well, emotional tolerance works the same, as you have to practice feeling bad. Think of a small child falling over and crying with pain at their first little tumble. And as the child grows, they get used to falling over, and as the grazes and the cuts get bigger and deeper, so does their ability to deal with them. So the next time a difficult emotion hits you, think of that small child falling over and what you would say to them. It's okay, it's only a little bump in the road. Be tough and you'll be fine. Values clarification. Ask any child what they want to be when they grow up and they'll say ballerina or astronaut, doctor, pop star or superhero. But what they don't say is to be able to deal with anxiety or to be an expert in man management or a good communicator. Now, of course, all those are skills that they will no doubt develop along the way. But what is key here is those skills are secondary to the bigger picture, which is the thing that they really want in life. And why should it be any different for adults? Because as important as it is to learn the skills that will help you deal with you know, difficult things from you know, your emotions, your fears, low self-esteem, let's not forget about your bigger picture. And this is the scary part. Because if there was a magic wand and you were given tons of confidence and you were always felt motivated, what would you really go out and do? So you need to ask yourself, what are your emotions holding you back from? And what is it that you really want to be able to do in life? Now, I'm not saying that not being able to fly isn't a valid reason not to be Superman, but not having the confidence to start your own business or not contacting your friends because your self-talk tells you that they won't have time for you means it's time for you to reevaluate your emotional strength so you're able to start moving forwards and away from all the things that are holding you back and have the strength to stop running away from the things that you really want to do in your life. If you're looking for some support and guidance to all the challenges being thrown at you at the moment, then do take a look at my 20 day overcoming obstacles and build mental strength training program. The link is in the description box below. The program takes no more than an hour a day and you can go at your own pace. Each lesson will give you the tools to help you face and overcome the obstacles in your life. And there's also a set of daily affirmations to keep you focused and motivated throughout. Why not start off by downloading my free book and see that as taking the first step in your very own personal marathon. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. Do take care and I will see you all next time.